nine pieces and a hardware bag. So I don't have my feet on the pedals. It's just, just absolutely doing a wonderful job. One. One. Gonna make you famous. That's good. <laughs> Rolling. Hey, I startled him. He's like, what? What do you see? Something out there? Look at Ed Booger's out there, buddy. He's tore up. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, that buddy. We are picking on the give mo. All right, let's talk about this planner. We, uh... Basically, I got this planner by ordering it and then asking for forgiveness later. Uh, I really recommend it for your marriage and your well-being as, as a married couple. Uh, I cannot reiterate so many times that is the proper way of doing it. Buy it, ask for forgiveness later. I have always wanted, I, I built a little single row planner uh, oh, maybe four or five years ago and it works great. But I've always wanted to, uh, one of these little double row planners. I have been looking at these for probably four or five years. Probably when I was looking at this planner back when I built my own planner. And this one will, it's quite a bit bigger planner. And we're going to plant enough corn this year and beans uh, to probably feed our, our whole county. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the end game. But let's go ahead and get this planner put together. This is the uh, Field Tough. Uh, Three-point hitch corn and bean planter and I know this because I read it directly off the label. Very smart. Very smart way to do it I need to sharpen that. Just saying Comes packaged pretty well It's got a big picture on the front of it that will help you put it together this thing's like 360 pounds so it's not a light uh, implement in any any form or fashion but we will set this picture over here for instructional value all right so here's the kit as it comes uh it, it's pretty much pre-assembled all the planters are pretty simple you can see this is heavy steel these wheels are cast uh they're cast iron they're not plastic just first glance it's, it's heavy and obviously at 360 pounds it that's why so I guess we'll start taking everything out and laying it out. I see, I see instructions. So my goal is to put this all together without instructions. Isn't that every man's goal? Really not a lot of pieces. All right, so this comes in, let's see how many pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces and a hardware bag. So. And Gizmo's done with it. He's got back in the truck and he's gonna take a nap. I think he thinks chicken strips are in the truck. All right, so we got, we're at the back of the tractor. We are going to measure from the center of the PTO to the outside of the wheel. And we're, we're just gonna say to the outside of the wheel, we're roughly 30 inches, maybe 29 and a half. So we're gonna give ourselves a little extra room and we're gonna set the rows at 32 inches apart, uh, which is, you know, if this tractor had ag tires on it, they would be a lot narrower and you could do a narrower row. But in our case, we've got a big garden and 
I would rather have the ease and comfort of using the tractor versus trying to fight, making sure that I'm not running over corn and stuff when I'm plowing. So we will go ahead and double check what they'll say and measure once, set your planter twice, measure twice, set your planter once. I don't think that's the saying, but I'm, I'm coining that phrase. So we are gonna go ahead at 32 inches. Yep, I'm gonna buy that. Let's go do it. Oh, this thing is heavy. 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 Yeah, this is no joke right here. If it plants as good as it weighs, it's gonna be a win for sure. So this is the Field Tough uh, corn and bean planter, two row bean planter, uh, fully assembled. And you can assemble this thing in probably, I'd say 30 minutes at the most. However, I went around for an hour because I swore that they had shorted me a bolt and washer and then turned out to find out it was in my pocket. So, sorry Field Tough. Y'all won't see any of that video, but I did go around going, hey, you know, I gotta go get a bolt and a, and a nut cry, gnashing of teeth, all that good stuff. So now I'm gonna take you on maintaining it, just doing a little maintenance on it, and some things that I like and dislike already. So now we're gonna prep it for field use, and I, I see a couple of things that I wanna do to it. Um, I, I wish it had covers for the tops of, of the bins, because it'll never fail. You'll be out in the garden planting, and it might start raining, and that's the worst thing you can do is get raining your seeds. So I'm gonna figure out some way to make a, uh, some sort of cap to go on here. I may look at the Field Tough website and see if they have some sort of, it'd be really nice if you could have like a, a plastic uh, cap that would go to the top of this and cover the seeds up. Cause it, it's gonna happen. You know you're gonna be out planting and it's gonna sprinkle and ruin all your seeds. So we'll talk about this cedar. Uh, each one of those, each side is basically set up the same. There is a grease cert here and there's a grease cert on the other side. There's a grease cert in here on this side. So there's one on either side of the planter. On the underside where the shaft goes through, on this side and this side, on both sides, there's a grease fitting that you grease to provide the lubrication for the bushings for this wheel. And there's also a chain in here that you would probably want to spray with a lubricant ever so often. So the next thing we're going to be doing is setting up the planter for use. So I feel pretty good about the, the garden overall as far as the tilling, but I'm going to go ahead and till it one more time and we're going to really fluff it up. I know that the tilling needs to be really, really uh, good so that the planter works like it's supposed to. And uh, I'm gonna give a shout out real quick to my good friend, uh, my good friend Hank and Gina from Hamiltonville Farm. They have a YouTube channel. Uh, you guys probably know it. We've, we've been friends a good while now. But they also have another YouTube channel called Black Barn Blossoms. And they do, uh, they have a, a flower farm slash nursery and they do a lot of tractor stuff. And it's just a great channel. They're always doing something, building something and making something. And the reason I wanna give this shout out is because I consider myself to be reasonably knowledgeable on tractors. I've been around them my whole entire life. And you know, but you're never too old to learn something new. So Hank calls me up the other day and goes, hey, I was tilling in the flower garden and I used the tractor's cruise control while I was tilling, I set the speed. And I'm like, wow, I I've never thought about that. Well, as you can see right here, I did that. Uh, after he told me and it turned out great. I'm gonna show you again real quick. We're gonna put a final tilling on these last two, uh, two, two patches that we're gonna plant today and show you what it looks like. It's amazing. Sit on creep now, that's a little too slow. I'll turn it off to a little faster. Probably a little bit more reasonable there. If I don't have my feet on the pedals, it's just, just absolutely doing a wonderful job. Thank you, Hank, for passing that little nugget of knowledge on.
planters on the back of the tractor now, and obviously, and then we've we've got it set up so when the when the planter is in the down position, that it's running level front to rear on its wheels. So you don't really want the tractor to carry very much of the weight. You want a little bit of pressure on the top link to keep the uh, planter from pulling forward as it hangs the coulters. And if you're not sure what a coulter is, this is a coulter. I, we brought it out to the road here and we use, we set it close to the level to the ground and then we use the three-point hitch adjustments to center the uh, planter to the tractor and then we also centered it left to right using the adjustment on the three-point three point, uh, hitch lift arm. So each one of these plant, planters, and there's two planters, has six grease fittings. There's a one for the top here and there's one on the bottom here and they're the same on both sides and then at the back here there's grease fittings on the bottom here and here. Now you want to grease these up before you start and you can rotate the planter. These cast iron wheels you can rotate these over and make sure that they're they're doing a good job. So we've set the, the planter all the way to the ground and I have the coulters basically dead in line with the wheels and this is counterintuitive what to, to what the direction says but the directions are taken to account that the sole is, is not as soft as what we have so the wheels are actually going to bury up in the sole a little bit and it's going to give us our one inch drop and that's again what i'm calling the fluff factor and uh we'll see how this works out so by adjusting this wheel on the side you can shrink the size of the seed hole so you can see we've got one seed in there and for the way it's sit right now it'll probably take two so we're going to go ahead and rotate this seed around a little bit where it wants to set like this so now we're looking at probably only one seed can get out there's going to be cases where more than one gets out but I'm, I'm okay with it once you get your seed placer to the right position you're going to tighten this lock nut back down right here or if you don't when when you're planting it's going to move and that that's going to expand and maybe start dropping two or three seeds at one time so make sure you lock that back down one, 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 all right. Okay, let me tell you what we've learned. The planter does exactly what it's uh, supposed to do. You, it, it's, you do have to learn how to set it up correctly. And it counter, you know, counterintuitive, you, you don't need to pulverize the dirt for your garden like we did with our tiller. Uh, our, we, we tilled our, our dirt on this particular garden here. It's like eight or nine inches deep. And that is not really what this planter needs. It worked, it functioned, it planted corn, but it marred up and I still think we're gonna get a real good, a good uh, 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 growth of corn. I think it's still gonna do fine, but don't go so deep with your tiller. Till about three or four inches uh, down and then run the planter across it. I think you're gonna be much more satisfied. The other gardens that uh, we have here, the other plots, we only tilled one time uh, and, and they did really great. <laughs> Thank you.
You gonna help me talk about it? Hey, buddy. Hey, just like that, we've got uh, a, all the corn planted. This thing went through planting really well. Uh, I, we take the rookie factor out of the using this planter. Next year, we've learned so much, and we're going to be able to plant a ton of corn and beans really fast. Uh, what would normally take us several days to do, we just wiped out in one one day. Uh, and as our garden grows, as our we clear land and and our garden grows, this this planter is going to pay for itself. I really think we're gonna get some good germination. After we got it set up, it seems like it's doing a really good job of getting the seed right where it needs to be. Time will tell though, two weeks from now, if we're out here planting again, you know that I set it up wrong. It's dropping seed. Everything else will be just on me as far as getting it set up. Listen, I really wish you would subscribe to our channel. We do a lot of videos like this where we're trying out new things and ways to make our homestead easier for not just this year, but for years and years and years ahead. I would appreciate if you would subscribe and hit the thumbs up. God bless. Have a great day.